I was prepared to improvise for the, the, the previous question. <laughs> <laughs> I was not prepared to improvise improvising. Uh, no, there are too many questions, I must say. In the, no, really, uh, it's, it's a comment, it's not a question. Could you help me, could you help me just in uh, drawing a thread and lead me to, to a specific question? Because there are so many, so many threads in, your, in the, the, the web of your uh, intervention. Uh, it's difficult to summarize what you have said. Um, but I think that I can only restate, I think, the last part of what I said, which is that uh, in some kind of mystical communion, which we attempt to have with our own gods, um, revealed to us in the Logos, which unites linguistics and literature, uh, can we in fact enter can into, we? can we in fact enter into the presence of that Logos in this holy place, this international conference? You, you, you imply that this is for you a holy place. <laughs> oh, of course. Uh, no, these the doesn't doesn't look like my my private churches. Uh, and, uh, as to the logos, I don't know. I don't know what what do you mean by logos in that case? Logos is a is a very specific Greek term used sometimes in the in the gospel, but. Uh, what, what is the logos in this situation? What do you mean by logos in this situation? Uh, ref refer to linguistics, for instance. What do you, could you uh, narrow your... Hello, yes. <laughs> to, put, <laughs> to put it simply and perhaps simplistically, all I mean really is uh, the presence of the word um, the presence of, well, the word representing culture, representing expression. Yeah. So w w what is your, your anxiety? I mean, I, I would like to, no, very, I just, I, I'm asking a very simple question. What, what have you in mind? I mean, what is your, your, uh, pardon me? Help me. Please. I was giving her a command, don't be coy. <laughs> I, I merely see in the relationship between what you were saying last night and our presence here today uh, a, a delicious irony. I thought that the recognition of that irony might appeal to you. <laughs> no, I don't... I don't no, <coughs> no the, 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 the only uh, analogy I would find between uh, Christian the Christian uh, negative theology scene I was describing last night. And this one is my suffering here. <laughs> I often ask myself the question, why? Why uh, uh, insisting on, uh, let's say, deconstructing something which is so good <laughs> uh, and the only answer I have uh, is something which is which contradicts in ourselves or in myself contradicts the desire for this good uh, but where does this contradiction come from uh, first I give it a name which sometimes I write with a, a, a capital letter, that is necessity. Necessity. And I, I write this word with a capital letter just to emphasize the fact that it, it's a s singular uh, necessity, as a, as, a single, as, as a personal, as a single person. I have to do with necessity itself. That is, something or someone, some aches, which uh, compels me to admit that my desire for good, for presence, uh, my own metaphysics of presence, uh, um, not only cannot be accomplished, meets its limit, but should not be accomplished. Because the accomplishment or the full fulfillment of this desire for presence would be death itself. 
death itself, the, the, the good, the good, the absolute good, uh, would be identical with death. And necessity, at the same time, the one whom I call necessity, um, teaches me, okay, teaches me, in, in a very violent uh, uh, way, to admit that my desire cannot be fulfilled, that there is no presence. Presence is always divided and uh, split and marked by difference, uh, by s spacing, etc., etc. Uh, so this is, this is uh, uh, on the one hand, a, a bad limit, something which uh, uh, m'empêche de jouir, <laughs> pleinement. But at the same time, is the condition of my desire, and if such limit was erased, then this would be death. This will be death. It will. At the, at the end, we know all this will uh, end uh, very badly. Hmm? <laughs> we, we know that at the end, <laughs> tout ça finira très mal de toute façon. Uh, so necessity is the drive. I'm still waiting for it clear, I mean, a scientific definition of what late capitalism is. <coughs> I'm particularly interested uh, in this, <coughs> because usually some <coughs> British, some English Marxists, or post-Marxists, <coughs> read everything in which I and, and some others are interested as a symptom of late capitalism. And when they cannot reduce those texts, I mean, recent texts, or the texts in which these recent texts are interested, when they cannot reduce these to previous schemes, Marxist schemes, related to capitalism in its classical form, if there is such thing, they say, well, that's late capitalism. That's late capitalism. So with these two reservations about the concept of ideology and the concept of late capitalism, I see no contradiction between <laughs> what I'm doing and what some, some post-Marxists are doing. There are new, new ways of writing, new procedures, new um, kinds of demonstration, uh, new axioms, new conventions, and uh, a new situation in which uh, we have to learn how to read those new things. Uh, in Europe, that is in, in Germany and in France, uh, where the constructionism is uh, is attacked as a new form of irrationalism or obscurantism, etc. And uh, it's difficult to to say this in English. Um, those people <laughs> uh, who uh, make such a uh, yeah, could, could I speak French? <laughs> uh, we charge the constructionism with being irrationalist. Uh, um, think that each time you ask a question about reason, when you ask a question about the history of reason, where does reason come from? What is the principle of reason, as distinguished from reason itself, because the principle of reason is something very specific in the history of, of reason. Uh, each time you ask such a question about the ethics of, of rationalism, not of reason, but of, of some sort of rationalism, etc., you are speaking against reason. So you are charged with being ir irrationalist and with uh, shaking, with, with uh, undermining uh, the um, the rational the rationality the the the, uh, the science uh, objectivity uh, uh, and so on and uh, you are charged with saying anything with giving up any rule and authorizing yourself with just improvising and saying uh, 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 writing uh, anything <coughs> but i would say that on the contrary first on the contrary uh, asking questions about reason, about the history of reason, about some obscurantist effects 
of some sorts of rationalism today in science, in, in, in the ideology and so on, is on the contrary a manifestation of rationalism, of, I would say, a new sort of uh, enlightenment. Well, it, it may be felt dangerous. Well, I, I, I realize uh, 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 seeing s the, n some, the nervousness of, of some reactions, especially in the academy, that uh, uh, some people must feel threatened, not, not by my work, but by all those things. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think that be probably because these new, uh, new and very old, hmm, very old, uh, much older than, than the old things are doing, is just f first um, uh, exhibit uh, the hidden uh, axioms or assumptions on which these institutions and these powers are um, relying. Uh, so uh, when you when you analyze uh, the source and the possibility and the assumptions on which these, uh, for instance, academic, but also cultural and some also political powers are um, built, then the source of authority is, is uh, threatened. And that's probably uh, an explanation for the, the fierceness of the, some reactions.